Hello everybody, Gator from Sharp. Excited to have you with me for a new series on Sharp Knife Shop TV where we are going to be talking about our favorite food YouTubers. Whether you've been cooking for a week or 10 years, there's always more to learn when it comes to cooking and getting inspiration and learning from uh, people on YouTube is an excellent way to increase your cooking repertoire. So we are going to be talking about our five favorite food YouTubers, cooking one of their recipes and just generally sort of giving you an overview of their channel and why we enjoy watching them so much. Much. Today's episode is all about our number five pick, Cooking with Lao. The Cooking with Lao channel is a fantastic resource for anyone looking to learn more about Chinese cuisine. It's run by a father-son duo, the father having been a chef in a Chinese restaurant for 50 years, and the son uh, now undertaking all of the multimedia um, responsibilities for the channel. So it looks to me as though he uh, writes out all the recipes, films, and edits all the videos. He's got a fantastic blog, and they've got an amazing, amazing collection of recipes, all of which are very delicious and easy to follow. Um, uh, so that you can create really authentic and delicious Chinese cuisine at home. Now, we are not going to do anything super crazy today, but one of my favorite recipes that I've learned from the Cooking with Lao channel is their ginger scallion sauce. It's a super, super easy recipe, um, and it can be used on basically anything. Uh, what they talk about in the video is how versatile the sauce is and how you can use it on chicken, beef, uh, poultry, seafood, basically anything that you want. And having made this a number of times, and having it in my fridge uh, basically always, I can totally agree with this. Uh, this sauce goes on pretty much anything, so I'm very excited to share it with you. Um, so let's get into making the ginger scallion sauce. All right, here we go, guys. We gotta start by chopping up our ginger and scallions. I'm gonna cut them all in half first and then cut them into little strips and then cut all those little strips into little, little baby pieces. In, the, in their video, they say that they want this nice and finely chopped. They mentioned that they spent about four minutes or so chopping up all the ginger and scallions. So quite finely chopped. This is a fantastic recipe to, to practice your knife skills with. In fact, that's one of the things I love most about making this recipe is how much stuff you get to chop up. And when you get a brand new knife, this is a great one to do. So you'll notice here, guys, that uh, that I'm using just the the whites of the onion. We did not uh, or, or describe that at the beginning of the video. So we uh, pulled the all the, the green tops off. We'll save those in the fridge for for something else, maybe for garnish or something uh, down the road. But uh, for this recipe, all we want are the nice white parts of our onion. We're not looking for perfection with this uh, chop here, so it can be a little rough. You just want it nice and small. Cool, so I've got all my scallions cut into these little strips here, so I'm just gonna turn them the other way and cut across them here and get uh, hopefully a really nice fine dice on these bad boys, so here we go. Of course, you don't need to do all of them at the same time like I am here. I've got a nice big 240 Gyuto going here, which makes working with a lot of veg uh, quite a bit easier. Uh, but if you just have like a small Santoku or something at home that you're using, um, just split this up into like a few different piles and you'll, Take a little longer to get it done, but it'll get done just the same. Remember, never scrape the edge of your knife across the cutting board. I don't want to see any of that stuff happening. And now at this point, we're just going to roll through our ingredients a little bit. So um, when you're using, a, especially a Japanese knife to do this roll chopping method, you want to be really careful not to apply a ton of pressure down into the cutting board. Um, that's probably the biggest culprit for chipped and damaged Japanese knives is uh, when you're using this rock chopping motion, if you're applying too much pressure down uh, with your hand into the cutting board as you're twisting, which will inevitably happen when you're using this rocking motion, you're gonna nick or chip your knife. So just very gentle pressure on the on the uh, on the one side of your blade here. Try to be as straight up and down as you possibly can be. And just very gently rock through this. Just to get it nice and fine and as even as you possibly can. I honestly find myself doing this quite a bit more than I do the rock chopping motion, so I can be very sure that I'm not going to damage my knife. And you'll notice that I try to go like this way. And then this way, make a little grid that we go through. Get all that off our knife, bunch her back together. And we'll probably go through this one more time here, but we're looking real good. Cool, I'm really happy with that. We've got a nice, uh, we've got a nice uh, fine dice on our scallions here, scallions. Above the water boiler. I was like, you mean the stove? <laughs> Ooh. 
We wouldn't want to mix up our scallions in our ginger before we mix up our scallions in our ginger. That would be bad. Okay, onto our uh, ginger here next. Uh, we're doing basically the exact same thing. Uh, we're gonna cut it into planks like so. Take all of our planks and cut those into strips. It's a great thing about this recipe is, is your knife skits, you can be as accurate or inaccurate as you want with your knife skills. Basically, all we're trying to go for here is nice and small, so no big deal. So again, this is not our recipe, guys. So we are going to just put in the description of the video down below a link to the food block where you will find the recipe made by uh, cooking with Lao. So check that out if you're interested. I would highly recommend, obviously. Oh boy, was that ever satisfying. A little run through here. Make sure it's nice and fine. It's smelling delicious in here, and we are all done our mise en place. Look at that, super quick and easy. Last thing we need to do now is just cook her all really quick in the pan. This recipe takes, I don't know, this is gonna take us, what, a total of, well, from the time it took me to get here and then go get oil from the grocery store, which I forgot, <laughs> and get the kitchen set up about uh, four hours, but if you take all of the pre-stuff out and just can take into consideration the chopping involves probably, yeah, four minutes or so. Of okay, through the magic of television, we are all set up with our pan. Uh, we've got our pan preheated here. It is a stainless steel non-stick, or not non-stick pan. So we need to make sure this guy's nice and hot before we put any oil in it. Trick here is just a, a little splash of water. If you see the water skating across the pan like so, rather than uh, just slowly sizzling, you know you're ready to go with your oil. Recipe calls for five tablespoons of corn oil. We'll put that into our pan first. Going in with our ginger first. Make sure we don't burn any of our ginger. I was maybe a little hot here, but it's gonna work out just fine. That was about 15 seconds, so we can go in with our scallions. That will also help to cool our pan down a little bit, which we need at this point. Mix all this up together. Keep things moving. And man, does it ever smell delicious in here. I love both scallions and ginger. Scallions and ginger together are just like a whole nother level of deliciousness. And that's it, we're done here, guys. Make sure you have something to put your finished sauce into, unlike myself. We'll do it on this side so the camera can see. Nope, no friend. We'll do it on this side so the camera can see. Get all that last little bit of goodness in there. Amazing. Okay, we've got our ginger, our scallions all cooked up and ready to go. So the last steps here are just seasoning. We are going to season with salt. And there's quite a bit of stuff in here. So we're gonna do two like big old pinches. We can always add a little more later if we need to. And then just like a little, little tablespoon or so of sesame oil. This stuff's really strong. So make sure you don't add too, too much. We'll do a little bit at first and then we'll taste. Be careful when you taste this. It just came out of the pan, so it's gonna be a little showed. But this is looking delish. Smells fantastic. A little aggressive with my stirring here. Let's give her a little taste. Mmm. 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 Man, that's tasty. Oh. What do you think, Jake? Needs a little salt or what? I'd say a little touch salt, but that's really tasty. One final taste here. Oh yeah. Mm. Don't be shy with the salt on this one here, guys. It really brings everything forward. We want a really punchy sauce here, and this is delicious. Now, this one turned out um, nice and thick. You could adjust the consistency based on your personal preference. If you want it even thicker, add a little less oil. You're still gonna need oil for this recipe. It is supposed to be like a loose 
sauce. Um, uh, but if you want it a little more oily, you can always add a little extra oil. But I'm very happy with this. Um, turned out delicious. As you can see, super, super easy. Um, and you keep this in the fridge, bring it out at room temperature, uh, maybe an hour before you actually eat dinner. It's always better at room temperature than when it's cold, fresh out of the fridge. Uh, but this is an amazing condiment to have ready to go in your fridge um, and put on basically anything, like we said at the beginning of the video, noodles, chicken, seafood, poultry, whatever you want. Um, this sauce is super versatile and I'm so excited to share it with you. So go check out the Cooking with Lao food channel and stay tuned at uh, sharp knife shop so we can show off to you our favorite youtubers and their best recipes thanks for watching stay sharp